What is up, guys? This is DDP back with a revitalized feeling dangerous. Now, I just recently returned for some time away, or rather from some time away, and while I was gone, as I said I would do, I took some time to really debate what I wanted to do with the future of the channel, and I don't just mean the post-game shows. You're going to get those, of course. You'll get all the Mavericks post-game shows, some Cowboy post-game shows, and, you know, whatever other general Dallas sports content I can do, whether it's college football, talking Big 12 specifically, or occasionally wrestling content or whatever, I'm going to do my best to keep giving you all of that content, but I'm not content with just that little bit. I want to express my creativity a little bit more, and part of that was taking that next step and really doing the Feeling Dangerous podcast properly. Not just having the post-game shows end up there, that's great, but I wanted to focus as well on some of the other aspects, some of the other ideas that I have. So with this revitalization, my goal is to give you three episodes per week of Feeling Dangerous. Now, depending on the segments, this could be a sports content, this could be pop culture, and by the way, if it is pop culture, that content will actually not post to the Dallas Prospect YouTube channel. It will instead go, if you're looking above my head now, to a new pop culture-based channel associated with the Dallas Prospect that I've created called Cheap Pop. Now, with that, you're going to get your film reviews, your gaming news and things of that nature, uh, television. It's going to basically be a catch-all for anything non-sports that I cover on the channel. And that will be things... I mean, in some cases, you'll get some of the writing based content as well there as I work on different short stories and things of that nature I might share uh, some of that there as well if that's something you guys are even interested in but while I figure all of that out I want to continue putting out three episodes per week if I can manage it I'm going to do my damnedest to manage it of feeling dangerous now this is again bonus content on top of the post game shows you already get so shouldn't be a concern there now, first and foremost, I wanted to start off with this episode, talk a little bit about the trip I took, the vacation, because I was gone from last Tuesday and I got back Saturday evening, and yeah, it wasn't a super long trip, but I was completely off the grid. Uh, I did not do anything social media related. I did not keep up with the Maverick games. I know I missed a couple games there and had to kind of read up on them after the fact, but the idea and purpose of the trip, as I explained before I took the trip, was to get away, to clear my head, and to refocus on 2020 and everything that I want to do in this year. Now, this is going to be a huge year for me and for the channel as, you know, I, as I record this, it's January 13th. Today is my 30th birthday. So already right there, you're stepping into kind of a new phase. Uh, I'm also starting back with my classes to finish out my degree in journalism, so that's another thing that I have on my plate uh, as of today. A little bit uh, cliche if you ask me that school starts back up on the day of my 30th birthday. So as I'm like, I want to change my course and I want to get real into this sports journalism thing and finish what I started. Oh, how, how cliche that I'm going to do that on my 30th birthday. Like it, it feels cliche. I guess it would be worse if it was like my 40th or something. But not worse, but you know what I mean. Um, regardless, I got that as well starting today. And yeah, as I've already talked about on the channel before, later this summer, in June specifically, I am expecting my first child. Uh, my daughter, name still pending, um, will be joining me as well. So it is by all means a big year already for me, even as I'm just now stepping into it, like the rest of you, less than two weeks in as of now um, for it. So with that, I wanted to take a lot of consideration. I wanted to have an effective plan, not just say, Hey, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Cause you know, we're growing. So what's the, what's the tweak? What's the mess with? I agree that what we're doing to date is good, but it can always be better. And that's part of what this trip was intended to do was to plan that out, clear my head and kind of see if I could get to the root of what I really wanted to do. Now, I will say this about the trip in particular. It was not the, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it basically, it wasn't the eye-opening epiphany moment that I felt I had 
the year before. And to be honest with you, that was frustrating for me personally, because last year when I took the trip, I had so much weighing on me that I think, I think I was close to cracking last year a little bit and getting that time and space to really clear my head and absorb everything and process everything did me a world of good. I did not have quite the same experience this year. Now, it was still good to get out there in the fresh air and to get away from everything, to not think about what time of day it is, what day of the week it is. All of that was good, and I still got a lot of writing done. I got a lot of reading done, and that was also part of the goal. All of that's great. I, I'm a little bit torn only in the sense that I don't think, while I do think I kind of thought through and processed various goals and how I would go about them for this year, I didn't feel that I got the full experience of what I set out for. And, you know, there's nothing that can be done about that. It wasn't for lack of trying. I was out there every night basically repeating the formula that I used last time. And uh, it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I still think it was good for me to get out there and get away. But, yeah, you know, I got this thumbnail here I designed before I left. You'd be amazed what you could learn about yourself if you just listened. I listened a lot. And I don't feel like I learned as much as I did last year. But I think part of that is because last year, I I hadn't really practiced opening up the hood, so to speak, and taking a look at myself and, you know, understanding uh, my, my part in things and myself in general. And because of that, I think I was in a much, much uh, more stressed out and frankly kind of depressed state. Since that time last year, although I've still dealt with stress and anxiety, I've taken a lot more time in in the moment to understand along the way myself in that regard. And I think that that's a big part of why I didn't need this big epiphany moment. I think I had already kind of, uh, I've already done a lot of the groundwork, so to speak. So when I sat down, there wasn't a big earth shattering epiphany to have. It was more so just kind of going through some of the little bit of clutters here and there, but it wasn't like pushing this big boulder off of my shoulders or something like that and just, oh, everything clicks and I'm just in a euphoric state of like, yes, I understand exactly myself. I understand myself exactly now and why I do things and this is what I should do and if I want to change this, I need to do this. It wasn't really that moment and I think once I understood that it wasn't going to be that way, I think I was able to still relax a fair bit on the trip, and that's still good. It's still good to get away. It's still good to set goals and to understand what you want to do without risking any kind of burnout because burnout is a wicked thing, and it's not just like YouTube burnout, um, which I don't think I have at this point, but it's in general, burnout is no good. It, we are pretty much, uh, as millennials, the burnout generation uh, in that regard, and so I want to really take care of myself along the way. It's not just, it's not that you're tired from doing too much. It's that you're tired from doing too little of the things that spark light in you. That's how I view it. And so I want to take time this year to really address those things and see if I can grow and build, not just as a person and as a content creator and all of that, but in every facet. You know, I want to be a better husband. Uh, when my daughter gets here, I want to be a good father. I want to also take care of myself and the things that I need. For me personally, writing is huge. Writing is a major uh, personal fulfillment of mine. It's a good escapism for me, and it helps me clear my head. A good day of writing where I do nothing but write and make a lot of progress is just about the perfect day I could draw up right now. And it's not near often enough I'm able to do that, and I understand that's going to be a managing process because I'm not going to be able to do that obviously a whole lot once my daughter gets here, but I'm going to have to figure it out. That's, that's just life. That's growing up. That's life and managing your time and everything to the best of your ability. Now, some of those goals I talked about in addition to doing this feeling dangerous podcast more, and I know this first episode is all about me and I, it's not typical. This is almost more like an extended vlog in this case, but typically the feeling dangerous podcast will still give you sports talk here uh, film review there, game news and reviews, things of that nature. 
And there's going to be some wild card content too, such as interviews and things of that nature. You know, I interviewed Big Game James in the past. I still want to interview Mario Cadena of Dark Avenue, a local rock band here in Dallas, who uh, whom I've befriended and have quite a bit in common with. In fact, I was actually at his wedding. I was like in his wedding. So that was pretty cool. But um, there's things like that I want to do as well. Things that I want to expand upon that. Now, pop, cheap pop will probably be where that interview ends up because he's a rock band. But I digress. The idea is I wanted to plan this out. TPN is still something I want to do, but I have to understand that until I get some other things in order that allow me to get you know, the proper equipment and space with which to work, I can't really realize that as I would like to. So with that in consideration, uh, I'm going to kind of leave that for now on the back burner. Maybe it's something towards the end of the year I can get into a little bit more. But with things like this, with Cheat Pop and with some of these other projects, I should be able to make some headway. Part of that is rolling out some new content, um, some new merch, I should say, for you guys. I've already released the one new Dallas Prospect shirt. Every legend was once a prospect. I've got three variants of that out. So if you want to check that out, that is on represent.com slash store slash Dallas Prospect. So check that out. The link will be in the description. Uh, additionally, I want to take a little bit of time to, um, to write more and self-publish some of my work. You know, whether it's a short story, a horror anthology or whatever, I've been working on a lot of different things over the years, and I think for a long time I locked in kind of stubbornly on the idea that I had to go the traditional publishing route. I wanted the validation of my work by having a literary agent and a publishing house stand behind me, and there was one time in the past I could have actually locked down a deal, and I backed away from the table because as we looked at uh, my biggest pet project, Affliction, it became very clear that the changes they wanted me to enact, well, it, it completely unraveled my story. And as I, I thought through the process of what they were saying they wanted me to change in terms of eliminating this character or changing this aspect of this character or whatever, it became clear that like it's not even the story I want to tell at this point. And so I backed away, and that's the closest I've come to actually landing in a publisher. And so that was frustrating for me, but I decided, I decided you know what? I'm going to stay true to myself in this regard and to my story, and that's what I'm going to do. So I, I've sat kind of on the back burner with this project. It's been starting and back burnered, back, you know, back on the foreground, back on the back burner, just constantly back and forth over the years. And I, I don't know that Affliction is going to release in 2020, the first book of it, but I can say that I want to release some of my new works, uh, some of my self, uh, self-published stuff. I'm going to self-publish this year to get some of it out there because you got to build the platform and the readership regardless. And there are a lot of definite advantages to self-publishing that I can still, if I want to go down the road, the traditional route, I could still do that, but there's no reason to hold myself back because it's already really hard to get in those gates for, for traditional publishing. And especially when you haven't published anything before, it's incredibly difficult. So I think I'm going to, just like with prospect, you know, rather than sh- you know, rather than waiting until I felt like I could do everything perfect and then doing content, I just said, you know what? It's not going to be great when I first step out there, but I got to start somewhere. I got I got to put the first building block in place. Doesn't matter if my content's terrible, doesn't matter if I'm stumbling, stammering over myself and I sound unsure of myself, I lack confidence. It does not matter. I need to just step up, put something out there and then just let the process, as I learn and get more experience, just let that put one block in front of the other until, hey, here we are now sitting at 3,700 some odd subscribers. I think we're pushing uh, 30, no, I think we're just over 3,700 right now. But regardless, I mean, we've, we've grown a lot in the two years that I've really been building this channel. And I see a lot of room for how I can continue to grow it beyond just the post game shows and all of that. So I'm going to build up both of these channels. You know, I, I do want to talk some pop culture stuff. I've done film analysis and decipherings uh, of different movies, complex storylines and series of that nature in the past. If you've read the Dallas prospect.com, if you've gone to that site, you'll see one of the, uh, I think the most viewed article in the history of the website was my theory analysis of 
John Carpenter's The Thing. And in that, I basically proposed a proposed a theory and then just meticulously laid out all of the evidence that supports the theory. And that actually got some decent traction. So that's something that I thoroughly enjoy. Like I enjoy doing that kind of stuff. It's a different type of analysis that I think is refreshing. And I would like to do more content like that. If you've looked back in the archives of this channel, you've seen a couple times I've posted videos on here. One was uh, a full analysis and deciphering of the Cloverfield uh, series, which has three movies that don't go together, but were kind of crammed together to loosely reference each other and pretend like they're a coherent story, even though they're not. Well done, J.J. Abrams. Um, I got that on there, and I did a analysis of Annihilation with Natalie Portman a couple years ago, that sci-fi flick. So cool stuff there. A lot of, a lot of cool different stuff that I'd like to do more of, and Cheap Pop is going to be my vehicle for that because I understand the vast majority of you that are here that support what I do, you're here because of Dallas Mavericks content. Or some of you, you're here because of Cowboys content. There's some crossover there, but I think at this point, uh, the data really s supports that the Mavericks audience has overtaken the, the channel. And that's great because I love talking Mavericks. That is my priority one. However, I'm going to, I'm going to do some other content that I want to do as well. And as long as I'm not taken away from the other stuff that you want to see, I hope that you guys would support that. And I think you would. I think the large majority of you would. So this is what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to try and continue building my creative writing career. I'm literally back in school working on building up my journalism career, my sports journalism career. I'm going to release all new content, podcasts, and things of that nature. I'm going to give you some film reviews, some gaming news and uh, reviews as well. I'm going to do everything I can to give you new exciting content throughout the week and to do that you know it's it, it takes a lot of time and effort i enjoy the hell out of doing it but it's kind of like every anything else like you got to build it for people to come I, i've said that always if you my advice to anyone trying to start a channel or a blog or whatever is you got to build it and then you got to keep throwing hard work at it. You got to keep putting quality content out there and eventually they will come. I'm a believer in that. However, there is a degree as well where it's like if the content's out there and it's not drawing the necessary views and things of that, then it's going to take a back seat of sorts. That was the case with Cowboys content. This channel started out pretty much exclusively as Cowboys content. And that's because when I started out, I couldn't get a lot of Mavericks viewers for whatever reason. The team wasn't very good. It was pre Dennis Smith Jr. era even. So it was a really dark time there. And so because of that, the Cowboy stuff was the only thing that really drew viewers to the channel. So I did a lot of that. And then that kind of plateaued. And then thankfully, as I wrenched up or ratcheted up the uh, Mavericks content, was in the lead up to the draft that ended up netting Luka Doncic to the Mavericks. And suddenly there was a flood of new viewers on that side. And it's just continued to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And that's great. Now in the Mavericks side has overtaken the Cowboys side. And it's just one of those things where you got to find that balance because the Maverick stuff is what really draws views and all that. I let you guys and your viewership dictate what takes priority more often than not on the channel that's going to still be the case here. If, if, if there's support for Cheap Pop and you guys are watching it and helping grow that channel, then I'll keep doing that. I'll put out you know maybe a video every two or three weeks for Cheap Pop because some of those analysis ones take a lot of time. Again, if you watch my Annihilation or Cloverfield series, you'll understand those deciphered videos. You'll understand why that takes so much time. <laughs> uh, but... You'll see more of that kind of content as well. And I would love, love to do more stuff like that. But if it's something that sits there and it's got 12 subscribers after four or five months worth of putting out content, well, then it's not it's not really worth trying to grow at that point. So I don't know. Part of, uh, part of this is I want to grow the brand this year. I'm going to throw more content than ever at you guys, and I'm going to give you my best 
effort on everything I put forth. I'm going to release new merch. If you if you want to help support the Dallas Prospect, I hate asking this because I feel like I'm. Uh, it feels like shameless self promotion, I guess. But I really want to grow the brand in this year, and so the ways you can do that, you can support us by checking out over here the Patreon link, uh, Patreon.com/slash the Dallas Prospect. The link is in the description as well. Anything, even just a dollar a month, not even the not even the price of a cup of coffee a month. Anything helps. And with Patreon, I'm going to do a better job this year of giving exclusive behind the scenes looks, whether it's uh, photos behind the scenes of different stuff we're working on. Like in the past, we did some stuff with TPN, some raw test footage and things of that nature, outtakes. Uh, I'm also going to give sneak peeks to different shirt designs coming in. I've got a new Road Warriors design coming out very soon that I think you guys are going to love. The latest uh, renderings came back and look phenomenal. So you're going to get glimpses of that and you're going to see what's coming down the pike. And I'm going to work in a discount as well for you guys of that nature. So yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to like there. If you if you support us on Patreon, you'll get a discount towards merch of that nature and uh, other goodies as well. Also, if you, if you don't want to do the monthly Patreon thing, totally understand. Uh, you can go ahead, if you still want to support us, and just buy the shirts on represent.com. Every shirt, I've pretty much, they got a minimum price that you have to do. You can't go below a certain price because, you know, they're going to take a cut as well for it. And I've basically lowered it as far as I can lower it without totally canceling out any kind of uh, profit that would go towards me for it. Uh, and everything from that gets worked right back into the site. It sets in a separate account, which then goes towards any software or equipment I need. If I need to hire an editor, which I am looking to do because of some of the new content I want to put out, that all goes towards that stuff. So those are different ways that you guys can kind of help support it. I think the combination of all of that plus the new, you know, the new swath of videos that I'm going to be dropping will help with the ad revenue a little bit as well, although we know how temperamental YouTube can be. I've had videos demonetized without any warning. I've had bogus claims where someone has called, even though I have um, a subscription-based license to use certain intro music, I've had other companies come in and still claim that music, and then YouTube does nothing to help me or offer anything back, so they're basically just stealing my ad revenue, which is why you've heard certain songs on here. You guys have even commented on how awesome you think the music is, and then within a week, I'm not using the music anymore. Well, it's because I'm not getting any support from YouTube in that regard. And I'm not trying to just kick dirt in YouTube's face. We all know the problems there, or at least most of us know the problems there that exist with YouTube as a platform. And I'm not trying to rant about YouTube today. I'm just saying there are adjustments like that that we have to make um, for it. So I, I don't know. Uh, I know I've been rambling here for a while, just kind of talking about the trip. Uh, my advice I said before, I think this is a good trip for anyone who wants to take it, just the remote cabin out away from everything, get off the grid, get off your phone, get off your computer, stay away from live TV, even like if you want to take like uh, movies out there or watch something on like Netflix or something, I mean, sure, go ahead. But the idea is you want to clear your head and clear your mind, refocus, recenter, all of that. And I feel like I was able to do that. I would give advice. In my case, I was outside of Fair Play, Colorado, which claims to be the highest elevation, um, highest elevated town in all of North America. I don't know if it actually is or if it's just damn close, but what I can tell you, altitude sickness plus not understanding that the altitude will affect your alcohol tolerance, not a good combination. That first night, I went uh, fairly hard by my standards, well within what I felt I could handle, but still relatively hard, you know, a few drinks that first night. And basically within minutes of finally laying down to go to sleep, I realized, oh no, this is, this is bad. This is really, really bad. So yeah, I woke up with a brutal hangover on my first morning of vacation, my first full day of vacation. That wasn't great. That wasn't ideal, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, I worked through it. I adapted to the, you know, to the elevation there and, uh, I had a good time. I had a good time. It wasn't everything that I dreamed it would be, but it was enough of what I needed that I feel good about 
where I'm at and what I'm going to be working on this year. There are other specifics out there as well. I'm not going to get into all of it right now. Just know more content's coming, uh, additional content beyond just the post-game shows. Yes, I plan to resurrect Mavericks Fast Break. I know we've already had a return episode. I, I planned initially on doing an episode yesterday, but Innie was out of town. We're going to try and get that back on back on the rails in a more frequent capacity. And we'll see. I, I want to sprinkle in as much content as I can for you guys because I understand this is something that, you know, if you're if you're here, if you support the channel, then it's something I'm guessing, at least to some extent, you would like to see more of, uh, more of outside of just the 15 to 20 minute post game shows that I do. So I'm going to do that because I feel like I have more I can offer and more that, uh, frankly you guys want to see. So I'm not going to dwindle on this too much longer uh, for a first video here, for a first segment, first part of a uh, Feeling Dangerous episode one. By the way, those are going to be, each episode is going to be probably an hour long. Maybe I'll go 90 minutes in some cases. But for the first segment here, I've been going, I can't even see that number from here, anywhere from 26 to 28 minutes. So I'm not going to bother with it, but that's going to do it for this segment. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.